Shaw Cable, dedicated to the community, service, and you, proudly presents Spotlight on UNBC, the University of Northern British Columbia. Brought to you in part by Northland Chrysler Jeep and Northwood Pulp and Timber Limited. Entering their 10th year of service and sales to Prince George and area, Northland Plymouth Chrysler, home of the caravan, the minivan that started it all. Celebrating a decade of industry-leading excellence and innovation, Northland Plymouth Chrysler is proud to sponsor Spotlight on UNBC. Keep informed as UNBC enters its first full year of operation. Located at 3rd in Vancouver, Northland Plymouth Chrysler invites you to visit their showroom. Northland Plymouth Chrysler, where people make the difference. Northwood Pulp and Timber is a proud sponsor of Shaw Cable 10 and its volunteer-produced television programs. Northwood also supports UNBC. As a partner in progress, Northwood has donated $350,000 towards the scholarship fund. When matched by the government, it represents a contribution of $700,000. Hi, and welcome to the December edition of Spotlight on UNBC. This is an important time of transition for UNBC, as it is for this program. We've made a few changes to the show, and we hope you like the new look. Speaking of transitions, there'll be a change at the helm of UNBC next year. UNBC President Jeffrey Weller has announced he'll be stepping down in 1995, and we'll find out why next. Also coming up on this program, UNBC is part of a new high-tech consortium. We'll profile the activities of a pair of UNBC student clubs. And of course, it wouldn't be December without our annual UNBC Christmas gift ideas. My name is Rob Van Adercombe, and those are just a few of the stories coming up on this edition of Spotlight on UNBC. Men and women from throughout this region believed in the idea of a university of the North. They worked hard and they succeeded. I can easily predict that these will be seen as the golden years of this university. You and I uh, have been involved in a process that was a once in a lifetime thing. You can value education and go elsewhere um, and get uh, the same information. But if you value what you get out of it as a person and your input into it, then UMBC is an awesome experience. I take pride in opening the university. And I wish you all, in whatever capacity you serve the cause of learning, a bright and successful future. Four years is a long time in the history of UNBC. Four years ago, the Prince George campus site had just been chosen. Construction itself would not begin for another year. Four years ago, Lakehead University Vice President Jeffrey Weller was named founding president of the University of Northern British Columbia. There have been a lot of changes over the past four years, and there will be another one in June when there is a new president of UNBC. I decided to resign at this point because it seemed to me to be an appropriate time. We just uh, all moved into the campus uh, here in Prince George on the hill. Uh, the construction phase is over, shall we say, the start phase is over. We've just opened with 1,400 uh, students and I would like to go back to teaching and uh, research, so this seemed to be an opportune time. The announcement of the resignation came the same day that UNBC employees were completing their move from temporary offices to the Cranbrook Hill campus. About 120 employees now have offices in the administration faculty building, including all of the administrative staff and a large number of academics. Completion of the move marked the end of the startup phase for employees, and a lunchtime reception was held to mark the event. Oh, lots of memories. Uh, remember lots of people in lots of places. I mean, one of the fascinating parts of, of the job was traveling all over northern BC. And, uh, you know, that was uh, really quite an advantage uh, of the job. It's a beautiful part of the world, and I got to see it in all seasons. I even got to see the Ulican run uh, when I was driving once from uh, Pins Rupert to, uh, to Terrace, and that was, uh, that was quite a sight. I mean, the official opening day, of course, is another 
uh, really important point in the development of the university. Moving into this office uh, was significant because that was when all of the people here in Prince George finally got together in one place instead of six places scattered all over the city. Any people really strike you as, as people that you'll remember for, for various reasons, you know, strong personalities that you think, you know, dealt with and, and not necessarily dealt with in a <laughs> negative way, but, but dealt with in a positive way over the years? Oh, yes, there have been lots of strong personalities. I mean, building a university uh, is a very complicated uh, process which involves an awful lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think those who started the process uh, some, what, six, seven, eight years ago uh, now to uh, be given a great deal of, uh, of credit. And we wouldn't be sitting here conducting this interview if it hadn't uh, been for them. And yes, there were some strong personalities and I'm glad there were because uh, the university is here because of them. Was it a harder process sort of building it? Than you, than you thought when you first got here? What did you, what did you, what did you expect you know, four years ago when you arrived in Prince George? You thought, okay, now here we go. What, what, what was in your mind then? As the oh, I expected it would be a, a hard slog, uh, and it was. It was indeed harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> it had uh, many more uh, aspects to it, I guess, than, than I thought it would. I realized there was going to be a construction project and a hiring project and an academic uh, planning project and something of a public relations uh, project. I guess I es underestimated the degree of politics. Uh, I underestimated to some extent the degree that the regional issue would uh, uh, would follow us uh, through, the, through the four years. Will you ever forget the four years you spent as uh, president of UNBC? No, oh, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> for all kinds of reasons. <laughs> Mostly positive ones, I hope. Oh, indeed, yes, yes, <laughs> you know, very largely positive. It's been, uh, it's been a great experience. Um, if it hadn't been, I wouldn't be coming back to the uh, faculty here. <laughs>and we're not talking about that something that is just down the road. This is the information highway, and friends, it runs right past your front door. BC Premier Mike Harcourt was also on hand for the September announcement. The corporations and institutions involved with the consortium are big name players in the high-tech industry. Companies like IBM, Hitachi Data Systems, and BC Systems Corporation. The consortium represents a whole new sector of the northern BC economy. That would not have happened without the university. I mean, the university has been the catalyst in, in making that happen. Uh, the companies uh, that ha are part of that consortium are very significant companies. Uh, you've mentioned some of them, uh, IBM, uh, Sun Microsoft, uh, Hitachi Data Systems. Amdahl Canada. I mean, there's there's a number of very very significant players in in the uh, technological world, and those companies certainly would not have had a presence in Prince George had the university not been here. Having said that, I think was, one needs to also give uh, a great deal of credit to BC Systems Corporation, who have been a driving force in bringing these people together and saying, look at in fact. Uh, this can work in Prince George, it will work in Prince George, and then to the companies themselves for recognizing the opportunity that was created here. But I think the, the uh, real issue here, or the real significance of this issue, is that this is the type of thing that can be created by the university. It would not have happened without the university, and it, the university can act as the catalyst for not only research and development, but for the development of whole new industries and whole new areas uh, of, of economic growth that, that we couldn't even have imagined uh, 10 years ago. Initiatives announced by the consortium include the construction of a $7 million secure storage facility for data and artifacts. The building they will construct in Prince George 
will be the most advanced security facility in Canada and probably the whole of North America. In addition, consortium member Sun Microsystems announced a donation of computers and training worth $250,000. We are proud to be able to make a contribution to this great university. At Sun Microsystems, we have a long tradition of association with academic institutions. In fact, the genesis of Sun came out of the universities of Stanford and Berkeley. And we are very excited about our partnership in the Prince George Technology Consortium. We like to think that Sun Microsystems, that we excel in partnering as a company that is barely 14 years old and doing $5 billion in sales worldwide, I believe we understand something about partnering. UMBC has always had as one of its goals uh, that of assisting in the economic growth and diversification of Northern British Columbia. The university will do this by means not only of the programs that it offers, uh, the type of people that it uh, graduates and, and the type of research that it conducts, uh, it will also do this by opening on its campus uh, both an, an in, uh, a research park and what we call an industry innovation area. The university is currently discussing the costs and the feasibility of doing this. We look forward to working closely in the future on those projects with the members of this consortium as well as others. There's more news around UNBC than there is time in this program. So this portion of Spotlight on UNBC is all about reviewing the major news of the month in a rapid-fire fashion. So it's appropriate that we begin the news headlines with UNBC's recent appearance at the 1994 Prince George Business Excellence Awards. The Newsmaker of the Year award goes to the University of Northern BC. <laughs> This is actually the third time that we've won this, which is incredible and shows a real deep commitment to what we're doing up there on the hill. Is that commitment that's going to make us uh, unique in, in Canadian universities? UNBC public lectures have been both popular and frequent recently. Highlights now from recent talks by federal NDP leader Audrey McLaughlin, Kitsan leader Don Ryan, and Assembly of First Nations Chief Ovid Mekrity. The future for us is as bright as we want to make it. That the challenge is for us to pick up. And that we have to go beyond the complaints, beyond the grievance that we have with white society, so that we can rebuild our communities, so that we can restore our culture, and we, be can be we can become strong human beings who are contributing to themselves and to the country. And I know that we are doing this in great progression in the halls of learning across the country, that when post-secondary education was made available to us in the late 1960s. As a people, we have made great strides to the point we now have at least 40,000 First Nations in university across this land. So clearly, we don't lack in intelligence. We don't lack in ambition and we don't lack in ability. I think the things that are going on in the Northwest uh, in terms of the politics of uh, land claims and the treaty negotiations, this is where the action is going to be. And it's a big part of the province, and I think that, that people should pay attention to it. Uh, the Nisqat negotiations that are going on, ours, the Wetsuren now, and you'll probably see other groups coming forward in the next uh, couple of years. And so it's really going to require a lot of uh, effort on the part of a place like UNBC to, to stay uh, current on, on what's going on. And that's why I, I didn't hesitate to come to do a talk today, because I think it's important for the institution here to hear what's going on and to try to set up the, the bridges um, 
some of the people here, Tonya, worked for us. Uh, Alan Gottesfeld has worked for us. So those are people I already know in in the uh, university that uh, we can work with. Iona Capanola, we know her. So so it's good to, to at least see people that you know and there there's uh, some connection there compared to UBC or UVEC or SFU. Mm -hmm. There's a very strong move uh, at the federal level to decrease uh, the post-secondary funding uh, in the budget. And in fact, that's part of the Axworthy paper talking about uh, a voucher type of system and so on. So I think what I've encouraged people here to do and would encourage everywhere is that people who have the direct experience <coughs> Uh, share that uh, with those who are doing consultations about these reviews, whether it's provincially or federally, because uh, if education returns to the point that it was at, quite frankly, when I was growing up, and that's a few years ago now, that really post-secondary education was only for the rich, I think we will have taken a huge step backwards. The executive director of the Canadian Research Institute for the Advancement of Women was at UNBC in October. One reason for the visit was to announce that UNBC will host the group's next annual convention next fall. The conference will be a major one as previous CREA annual meetings have been known to attract between four and six hundred delegates. We focus on issues that are of real concern to women. Uh, we've, we've had a conference, for example, on women and disabilities which attracted over 300 women to Charlottetown. Uh, we've had conferences in uh, Yellowknife, uh, in every province and territory. And I think it's the theme and, and the fact that it isn't uh, solely an academic conference. Now to the activities of a pair of UNBC academics. UNBC International Studies professor Larry Woods has received the Best Academic Book Award from an influential American magazine. The book is about Asia-Pacific diplomacy, and news of the award came as the Prime Minister and his Team Canada delegation were in the midst of a successful trade mission to Asia. The award basically guarantees that the book will be incorporated into courses on Asia-Pacific relations at colleges and universities throughout North America. From international studies to environmental studies, UNBC Environmental Studies faculty member John Curry is the newest appointment to the Fraser Basin Management Board, which has been established to examine environmental issues in the Fraser Basin. The board is really set up to look at the long-term sustainability of, of the Fraser Basin. It's really the only river, major river in North America, that has survived going through the damming, the damming process in various ways. but. No major dams have been built on the Fraser itself, on some of the tributaries, yes, mm -hmm. but on the, the river itself, it's still basically a natural, free-flowing river. And obviously, people who live within the river basin and uh, people beyond the river basin have great concern that it is maintained. We're not just talking about a river, we're talking about everything that relates to that river from, a, from an environmental or an ecological point of view. And that's our challenge, is to ensure that everything that happens within the basin is sustainable. Natural Resources and Environmental Studies is the first UNBC faculty to make co-op job placements available to students. And UNBC's first co-op student was hired in November. Co-op students alternate academic terms with work terms with an eye to gaining experience as well as an education. Forestry student John Spagrud is UNBC's first co-op student and he'll be working for Northwood Pulp and Timber next semester. I think without co-op, there won't be as many doors open for me without it. I, I know that for sure, I think. This just gets, like for my, for my own personal case, like, like I'm going to be working for Northwood, so, and, and my goal has always been to work for a licensee, major licensee, but it's, it's tougher to get get uh, get your foot in the door there when you're just you know uh, sort of a you know regular guy out of university for the past two years through the magic of television spotlight on UNBC has been able to chronicle the creation of UNBC this book too the first production of the UNBC press provides a visual record of the creation of the University of Northern British Columbia
By the time we'd reached September the 8th and the first day of classes, we'd gone through an extraordinarily heady time that we've had three years with a, with a bunch of real high spots. And what I was hoping to do in the book was capture the high spots, actually capture a lot of the fun of what was going on. Something that pleases me very much about the book is a lot of the photographs are, are showing some real fun moments. And it's a great keepsake that uh, we've captured three years of activity. It's, uh, it's coming out uh, at a very opportune time. First of all, we've, uh, we've just, I mean, there's photographs here that are, that, uh, are only a month or so old, uh, and it's just in time for Christmas. I have a number of real favorite photographs. There's one that, that I was really tempted to make the front page cover. This is uh, it's a photograph of, of a couple that uh, were photographed uh, at the, the opening ceremony afterwards. I think it's a wonderful photograph. It's people that have been supporting the university for years that came up to the opening day. were obviously having a wonderful time watching the celebrations. They're wearing UNBC t-shirts. Uh, it's, it's a happy, poignant photograph. I love the thing. The UNBC Scholarship Anniversary Fund has reached the $6 million mark. The most recent contribution to the North to the Future campaign has come courtesy of Canadian National, which contributed $150,000 to create scholarships and also to acquire distance learning equipment. There's more to going to university than just attending classes, writing papers and cramming for an exam. There's also an important social component, which is often the parts graduates remember long after they've forgotten the information on their first calculus exam. There are over 60 student clubs in existence at UNBC, and their activities will be profiled on this and future episodes of Spotlight on UNBC. This month, we begin with the football and newspaper clubs. Lots doing notes. You guys flaring up in the middle, okay? okay. On one. Ready? Frank! Ready? Frank! Ready? Frank! I love the University of Notre Dame, and I love their football program, and their football program makes me want to start up a program here so we could you know not only learn in university but we could have fun and play sports and it does go hand in hand Ready? Frank! while a majority of the students in the club are male there is one female the reason well the only other UNBC student team sport is hockey and she doesn't know how to skate some of the guys want to see me prove myself, and I think I did that pretty well in first practice. I think a couple of them thought I was out there to prove a point, which I wasn't. I just like playing sports, and I wanted to play it. You do, I think, get a little bit of a different treatment when you're a woman. Like when we played in the tournament, I think a few of the guys were kind of taken back. They didn't quite know how to treat me on the field, especially playing line. Ready? Inside, meanwhile, preparations are being made for the next edition of the UNBC student newspaper called Over the Edge. This is the first one I've, first paper I've been on actually, and uh, it's, it's been a nightmare. Understaffed, overworked. <laughs> underpaid. Underpaid. Um, what can I say? We have no premises to use. We just keep moving from computer lab to computer lab until we get thrown out. Uh, stealing photocopiers where we can find them, rifling through paper at work to use here, stuff like that. Um, it's just a, it's a kind of a real, well, I can't say that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard, it's, um, I'm rambling now. <laughs> we can, we just, well, I've still got uh, space from an ad that never showed up and an article that never showed up. I've got to fill and I'm, so I just change the font, make it a bigger font and write my other articles twice as big. <laughs> Stuff like that, a little cheat on the borders, just like you do when you're writing essays for your instructors. You make the margins a little wider than normal and stuff like that. Three spaces after each period instead of two. It makes a difference. It really matters. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's the only experience that's been most rewarding for me. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm almost concerned that uh, I'm going to fail all my classes because of the newspaper, but I doubt that'll happen. I'm going to fail all my classes. But I got two. Th Two more issues of the paper to get out before Christmas time, before the, we go back on our Christmas break. And I got four term papers due uh, in three weeks, well, between two and three weeks that I haven't started yet because I've been working on the paper and doing other things. Um, you know, I mean, I also work full time, 32 hours a week, so, you know. But, but I was, 
But I was going I was going to quit the paper and I decided not to. Well, I'm gonna quit. I've got Thursday that I haven't started. Cut the glue? I'm not using it or something? What is this? Yeah. Oh, there's another one. It's, it is fun. It's horrible. It's fun. But right now I'm just I'm frazzled because I'm like I guess I'm like production editor or something. If the paper looks bad, they're gonna blame me. Yeah. Does that concern you? Yeah, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist about some things. But we need an office badly. Like I know I had like a long, probably a 20 minute discussion with the janitor about the state of this room yesterday. It was worse than this, if you can imagine that. It looked like a tornado hit it. There was like paper everywhere. No, edit it. Please. Like just go spell check, grammar check. Make sure everything's okay. Can you do that? Okay. It's poison pen. Do it like in big lettering and italicize it and bold it. See, I, I like this job. I get to give orders, but I feel bad about it. <laughs> I can tell. Oh, really? Jeez. I don't know. So what else do you want to know? I'd say it's a rag right now. <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, worth the paper it's printed on, but we're making an effort, and it's coming a long way, and uh, improves 110% with each printing. But it would be a lot nicer if we had some equipment and an office, and uh, I'm getting a dirty look, so I think I should shut up now. And some money. Money would be nice. Thank you. Ho, ho, ho. I've come down from the North Pole early this year to do our second annual UNBC Christmas gift ideas. Now, when I came down from the North Pole in August, I discovered that the Queen was here to officially open the campus, so I have some very interesting gifts from when Her Majesty was in Prince George. Now, the first thing that I discovered was that she, when she was having tea with a bunch of students, I found this, a teacup with the Queen's very own royal lipstick on it, so you know that this is one very unique and very authentic Christmas gift. And then I discovered right next to the teacup, this box of red rose tea. Because everybody knows that you can only get this stuff in Canada, and even the queen thinks that that is one real pity. But that wasn't the end of it. I discovered right next to the box of red rose tea, another very unique Christmas gift. Check this out. Here we have an English muffin, of course, but there's a bite out of it. And I had this checked by Santa's very own dentist, and he told me that this is exactly the same tooth print that Her Majesty would leave. So you know that this also, very unique, very authentic. Perfect for everybody who has everything. Now, this time of year is, of course, terrible for students. They hate December because it means essays are due, exams are coming up. So if you're thinking of a gift, for the student who has everything except good grades, we have this assortment of passing grades. A C, a B, and for the excellent student on your list, an A. So those are the UNBC Christmas gift ideas for 1994, and we'll see you for Spotlight on UNBC for our first edition in January 1995. My beard's falling off. <laughs> All, All we, we want for Christmas, Christmas is, is our residence, residence furniture. furniture. Our couch. <laughs> a desk. <laughs> Would be nice. I want to be home with my mom for Christmas. And I'd also like someone to write my papers for me. I'd like a trip out of Prince George and a reading break for next semester. And what do you want for Christmas, Dave? Uh, I just want to be loved. Uh. <laughs> That was pretty poor, wasn't it? <laughs> that, was, that was brutal. Let's see that one again. I'll just see the flower one. But didn't you like my acting? Hey. <laughs> no, that's brutal. Okay, let's go. And what do you want for Christmas, Dave? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some flowers? <laughs> oh, I'm allergic to these things. <laughs>